Okay, I'm audible, right? To everyone? I have started my recording. Sir. Very few participants. What happened to other? Inform all, okay? Anyway, will not wait further. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, this is your class of professional elective one. And subject is railway engineering. And we are in module one. And I hope, I guess we are discussing about different component of railway. We are discussing about different component of railway. So till now we have discussed about our rail. We have discussed about sleeper. We have discussed about track gauge. Okay, what is track gauge? All these things we have discussed. Uh, now uh, in today class, we're going to discuss about uh, that one ballast okay so basically you know all these things that i already given that ballast is laid uh, above the soil subsoil and the slippers are laid above the ballast fine and the line load or point load from the rail is transferred to the ballast as a area load and the, the load is transferred to the larger area with the help of ballast and ballast is made of what you all know these things aggregate okay whenever you go in the railway track you can see some aggregate coarse aggregate fine so there there's uh, the formation of the coarse aggregate are known as ballast okay so now i'm going to share my screen so that you can see my notes So wait, is it visible? My laptop is visible. Respond, please. Yes, okay. sir. Let me check what the notes. So. Okay, so we are going to discuss about ballast. Okay, so I think you have all familiar with ballast. Let me uh, show you some uh, image for ballast. Let me check. Wait. I'll show you a railway cross section again. Uh, here also you can see. Can you see in this drawing? So this is a typical uh, cross-sectional view of a railway track. Here you can see the rail. Okay, it's a flat-footed rail, I guess. So rails are uh, fixed with the sleeper. You can see this is a sleeper with a fastener. Okay, or chair, you can say. The rail is attached to the sleeper and the sleeper, sleeper is laid above the ballast here you can see the ballast i'll show you the real picture also and uh, below ballast there is a sub ballast also uh, it, it even it, this one also a coarse aggregate of smaller size and after that at below there is a foundation you can or you can say the subgrade soil this is soil only above soil there is a coarse aggregate again coarse aggregate this formation is known as ballast and they are uh, provided in terms of slope Okay, like 1.5 is to 1 in the kind of slope it is provided. Okay, and this rail and the sleeper are attached together by using fastening or fastener. Okay, I'll show you some actual picture here. Here you can see some actual picture.
here you can see these aggregates are ballast okay and here also sub ballast below this okay so we'll go to the notes now so basically uh ballast is a layer of broken stone okay gravel or maroon soil or any other granular material placed and wait 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 x again wait a second okay Okay, wait. Okay. Now, so basic definition of ballast is what? So ballast is a layer of broken stone, gravel. Okay, and you can you can cancel this or any other material, other granular material placed and packed below and around the slipper for distributing load from the slipper to the formation, and it provides a drainage as well as well as a longitudinal and lateral stability to the track okay so if i uh, compare with the drawing here you can see uh, basically uh, wait how to go here here yeah so basically uh, this ballast or it is made of what a granular material okay this granular material are provided to transfer the load from the sleeper to the uh, formation or subgrade soil and also it's provide a uh, for a better drainage okay that means whenever it's it is a raining season so to safeguard the railway track from flood okay so this granular material will help for the proper passes of water through it okay since they are granular material the voice will be uh, more in this section and water go easily into the gravel it will pass away okay that means ballast also help in a better drainage system in railway track also it also safeguard the alignment and the direction of the rail as well as the sleeper since sleeper and the rails are attached together and the boat at the assembly is fixed in the ballast okay because of the ballast uh, this sleeper will not go in different direction it will stick in that position and because of that rail also be in the same alignment 
and ultimately the rail or a train is moving safely throughout the railway track okay so basic definition the whole definition represents the function of ballast also okay that means a ballast is a made of gravel or any granular material place and packed below packed means what packed means it is compacted okay it's not like just you just place the ballast and so it's fine no we have to go for compacting the ballast also okay so that it get more strength by giving some compaction okay that's why is the term given here packed so ballast is made of gravel or broken stone or any other material granular material placed and packed below and around the slipper below the slipper and around the slipper okay for distributing the load from the slippers to the formation fine and it also provide drainage okay i already told you now it's also provide a drainage also a longitudinal and lateral stability longitudinal and lateral stability to the track that means it will it doesn't allow the rail as well as a sleeper to move in horizontal direction or in the long, longitudinal direction it will not allow fine that means it safeguard the ballast safeguard the track in longitudinal, longitudinal direction as well as in lateral direction so it provides longitudinal stability and lateral stability to the track okay so overall in this definition whole uh, basic idea about ballast is there the material what is the material of ballast what is the purpose okay all these things next function of ballast so basically we already discussed about function of ballast so let's again let's revise so the ballast serves the following function in the railway track so what are the functions it provide level bed or support for the railway sleeper even here even the drawing also you can see the ballast provide the level track for the rail or as well as for the sleeper okay it transfer the load from sleeper to subgrade and distribute the load uniformly on the subgrade so basically if i go in the drawing again the function of a uh, sleeper is what a uh, function of ballast is what to transfer the load from the sleeper to the subgrade soil uniformly okay it holds the sleeper in firm position while a train pass by okay that's why it gives lateral and long longitudinal stability okay it holds the sleeper in a firm position while train pass by when train moving along a sleeper uh, along a rail because of the vibration uh, in the rail uh, it may go it try to move away from the track okay but because of the presence of the ballast because of the presence of the ballast it will not go in different direction it is have a stability it gives stability in longitudinal and in lateral direction okay that means it prevent the longitudinal and lateral movement of the sleeper fine it also offer good drainage to the track that means all these things all these uh, points can be found out from this definition if you know this definition you can find out the function is very easily they are interrelated okay so it is kind of a um, smart work try to remember this definition or this function anyone so you will get this idea now let's discuss about type of ballast we already discussed it we can use different sizes of ballast broken stone or any granular material okay so broken stone ballast let's discuss about that so broken stone is widely used widely used ballast in railway so when uh, usually a broken stone is usually used in railway it is obtained by crushing hard stones it is suitable for high speed rail railway track now what are the benefits of uh, broken stone so broken stone are hard tough and durable it can hold the sleeper in a strong position and provide stability to the track it also suitable for heavy traffic track and high speed track it is also economical with respect to the higher their durability okay 
and requires less maintenance fine so that's why usually we can see a broken stone widely used in railway but along with some advantage they have some disadvantage also so let's discuss about that so drawback of broken stone ballast since broken stones are not easily available their initially cost is little high so of course so you cannot get the stones in all the in all areas okay in specific area only you can have the stone so to get the stone it's little costly it become little costly okay now it's produce noise when the train is moving on the train so yeah so it also produce noise when the train is moving on the train or moving on a track they are sharp and angular and hence wooden sleeper may be liable to damage by this broken stone that means if you're using a uh, broken stone ballast it is not uh, good or economical to use wooden sleeper above this it's better to go for concrete sleeper or other sleeper okay if you're using a wooden sleeper that because of the presence of the broken stone due to the friction uh, concrete as friction it may uh, damage the wooden sleeper because they are have some sharp edges or angular in shape okay so it's better to avoid wooden sleeper if you're using broken stone ballast fine next let's go for a sand ballast you can also use sand also okay so yeah so benefit of sand ballast so it provide excellent drainage facility to a track sand ballast is well suitable for cast iron sleeper and does not produce any noise while the train is moving on the track so in terms of noise you can go for sand ballast and it is and it is cheap okay and usually available material so you know the sand is uh, usually available material so you can use the uh, sand also but you will not see sand all the way because of some drawback okay so what are the drawback of sand ballast sand may blow off easily due to vibration produced by train or due to high wind so a freaking renewable is required that means you all you know comparatively compared comparing with the stone ballast sand is little lighter in weight so due to vibration as you already feel that today in the morning earthquake happened so like that in this kind of situation and because of the heavy wind blowing the sand may wash away from the railway track so that means you can go frequent uh, maintenance of the track okay that means uh, maintenance cost may be high okay so this is the drawback of sand ballast then excessive wear of sleepers and moving part can occur due to friction developed by sand that means sand particles are very very uh, small and but very hard and since the sleepers are in directly contact in, with the ballast and if you're using sand as ballast so because of the friction continuous friction between sand and the sleeper material it may get it may cause a failure to the sleeper failure some wear wear of sleeper may occur or you can say the uh, failure of the sleeper may occur due to the friction between the sand and the sleeper material fine next you can also go for gravel ballast so gravel is a naturally occurring material formed by the erosion of rock they are suitable for all type of sleeper and are usually round and smooth and can be obtained from river bed gravel pit etc okay so you can also use a gravel ballast you can use the gravel collected from the riverbed or riverbed stone also can be used and they are round in shape and very smooth okay let's discuss some benefit of that 
so since it's occurred naturally hence it is cheap and easily available even in a uh, country like india also where all the around there is a river tributary river okay so you will it's very easy to get a uh, river bed stone that's why it is very easily naturally available and hence it's very cheap it can be used okay next a uh, properly clean gravel offers excellent drainage facility to attract since they are smooth and round okay so the drainage or the passage of water through the gravel ballast is very uh, good you can say next number 3 well packed gravel requires less maintenance and high durability they also require very less maintenance that means the maintenance cost will be very less if you use gravel ballast but there is a but there are some drawback also of gravel ballast so because of their smoothness and roundness they may not separate it from the bed under vibration they may get separated okay sorry that means because of their since they are smooth and round they they are not packed so close to each other okay okay they are, they are little bit separated they are make they are behave like a individual particle okay that means because of vibration they get separated from each other and if they get separated from each other the strength of the ballast may go decrease and finally it will affect the railway track or you can say the movement of the train next since it occurs naturally it may contain some amount of earth or clay which should be clean if not clean the drainage property of the gravel may get affected that means can be uh, this issue can be solved but anyway there is a issue that since it's naturally occurred material it may contain clay or uh, any other impurities or organic matter also which affect or hits effect in drainage or it may decrease the drainage property of that gravel okay so for for that we go we have to go for sieving you also you familiar with the sieving uh, method in soil mechanics lab as well as in transportation engineering lab sieving should be done to eliminate all small size gravel particles otherwise they may affect the drainage property this is all interrelated this too it also produce noise when a train is moving on the train okay, okay. another one is there uh, morum ballast so morum is formed by the decomposition of laterite or reddish clay material or hard when dry okay reddish clay material means the usual uh, soil we can find in hilly area in northeast you can see the laterite reddish laterite soil they are also known as morum soil here you can see it is available most it is available mostly in red color and sometimes in yellow okay and basically red color is come from uh, the presence of iron oxide okay yeah this is kind of a general knowledge so if the track is to be laid on black cotton soil a morum can be used as a blanketing material or sub ballast since it prevents permeability of water into the subgrade or formation that means uh, suppose your subgrade soil is black cotton soil that means i'm talking about this subgrade soil suppose your natural soil is your black cotton soil now you are already familiar with black cotton soil i hope black cotton soil is what is a highly plastic soil or you can say highly clay soil it have a abil ability to shrink or expands its volume depending on the presence of water okay if water can pass through this uh, ballast material and it go through this formation subgrade soil and if the soil is your black cotton soil then there is a chance of expansion of formation okay and if get expand it may uh, cause failure to the railway track and suppose in dry season if the water go out of the formation then the soil get string in volume and because of that also it may cause a failure in the upward portion finally it will um, cause the railway track 
ठीक है सो इन दैट केस इन दैट सिनारियो इफ योर सबग्रेड सॉइल इज ब्लैक कॉटन सॉइल इन दैट केस ए मोरूम सॉइल दैट मीन्स दिस सॉइल कैन बी यूज एज अ बलास्ट ओके विच कैन बी यूज एज अ ब्लैंकेटिंग मेटेरियल दैट मीन्स इट इट प्रिवेंट वाटर टू पास थ्रू इन टू द सबग्रेड सॉइल ओके दैट मीन्स इफ आई शो यू हियर इफ योर फॉर्मेशन सॉइल इज ब्लैक कॉटन सॉ ब्लैक कॉटन सॉइल और हाईली प्लास्टिक सॉइल और हाईली क्ले सॉइल इन दैट केस इट्स प्रिफरेबल टू यूज योर मोरूम सॉइल और रेड लेटराइट सॉइल एज बलास्ट विच यूज एज अ ब्लैंकेट ऑफ वाटर फॉर्मेशन एंड इट विल प्रिवेंट वाटर टू पास थ्रो एंड पास थ्रो द ब्लैंकेट एंड इट विल प्रिवेंट द वाटर फ्रॉम एंटरिंग इन द फॉर्मेशन ओके वी हैव टू प्रिवेंट वाटर एंटरिंग इन टू द फॉर्मेशन ओके इफ द फॉर्मेशन इज ब्लैक कॉटन सॉइल ओके इट्स अ स्पेशल केस इन दैट केस ओनली यू कैन यूज मोरम सॉइल you can see benefit this kind of you will see it easily in even in dandan university you will see this kind of uh, soil okay so let's uh, discuss some benefit of morum soil so morum is a good as a sub ballast especially in the case of weak soil subgrade that means this morum soil can be used as sub ballast now i told you this sub ballast this is the sub ballast okay sub ballast is uh, provided above uh that ballast main ballast okay so in that sub ballast you can use this morum soil and it provides good aesthetic aesthetic to the track also that means it appear good here next the drawback of morum ballast so what are the drawback it is very soft and when subject to vibration gets converted into powder of powder from and blow away okay they are very soft it require frequent maintenance because of that and they are not usually not recommended unless there is another not another material available okay so you can say if there is no other other material available like uh, a broken stone or ballast okay then you can go for that modern ballast next we will discuss about another one a coal ash or cinder ballast the so coal ash also called the cinder uh, is the by product of coal fired powder plant and railway locomotives okay so usually you uh, even uh, even in the steam engine railway also you have seen even in the movie also you seen that some coal is used as a burning material okay so this coal is also can be used in ballast so what are the coal ash ballast benefit so it is economical and abundant material abundant means it's a waste material actually so it good to use a waste material it is it has excellent drainage property okay it has a very good drainage property and it can be handled with ease and it's very light in weight also so these are the benefit of coal ballast coal ash ballast along with that they have some disadvantage or drawback also so it turned into dust when subject to load that is the main problem they are not good in strength bearing they are not good load bearing uh, material or load bearing ballast it make tracks dirty and complicated to maintain procedure okay of course the coal is little if you touch the coal It will remain a uh, at left a footprint in your hand. Okay, so if you're using a large amount of ballast in the railway track, you just imagine how it be, um, the it look the track look like. So it may, it makes track dirty and complicated, and the maintenance procedure will also become complicated. Okay, it is not recommended when the when steel sleeper are used because of its. corrosive action okay so because of the presence of other material they also react with the steel material of sleeper so it may corrode the steel sleeper so if you are using a steel sleeper you will not go for 
coal ballast coal ash ballast okay and next uh finally we're going oh the, the last one is there the rail may also be get affected by corrosive action of coal ash right? it's also there we will be discussed <coughs> so next last one is there a uh, brick bed ballast so somehow somewhere the brick can also be used as a ballast So brick bed ballast are nothing but crushed pieces of brick, which are generally overburnt. Under burnt bricks are not suitable since they are not as porous as overburnt bricks. So the, you also know in you have learned in uh, building material and construction that there are different type of brick, first class brick, second class brick like that. So if you are <coughs> the overburnt brick. Okay, they are burned in for higher higher temperature than the general brick or standard brick. So over overburned bricks are used can be used is as a ballast material. Okay, <clears throat> and yeah, but under burn brick that means the standard brick are not suitable since they are not porous. But over bring bring over burn bricks are comfortably they are porous material that means the drainage conditions are good comparatively so let's discuss uh, benefit of uh, brick bed ballast so it porous brick bed have a good drainage property i already told you that overburn brick have good drainage property they are uh, useless products of brick industry and hence can be brought to cheap price that means Usually in uh, domestic purpose or residential purpose or any building construction purpose, uh, usually we go for first class brick. We don't. We usually avoid the uh, overburned brick because they are the shape. They are not in proper condition. Okay, so you can say the overburned brick is kind of a waste product of brick industry. So it can be. It's good to use. Uh, you will have a in a cheap price. Cheap price. Okay. But the drawbacks are of uh, brick bed ballast are the when subject to load they turn into powder which can be easily blown away by the wind so they are also not in good in low, low take uh, load bearing okay so brick thus makes the track dirty and demands frequent maintenance just like the coal ash ballast brick bed ballast also since they got turn into powder and they are not uh, they are not good in holding load they turn into powder and they make the track dirty and it's require frequent maintenance okay. that means maintenance cost also going to be high you can also add another point here also maintenance cost also high so these all are type of the ballast can be used brick bed ballast and coal ash ballast then maroon ballast then gravel ballast then sand ballast okay broken stone ballast like that so you have to remember all these things the advantage the disadvantage of all each and every type of ballast okay so let's discuss uh, finally <coughs> the tire size of ballast so usually 50 mm ballast have been adopted universally for all type of sleeper this standard size of ballast should be as per Indian railway specification. So you have to remember this. Okay, 15 millimeter. The specification provides grading of ballast from 25 millimeter to 65 millimeter. Maximum ballast, uh, maximum quantity of ballast being in the range of uh, 50 millimeter to 50 millimeter size. Okay, basically we use uh, 50, 40 to 50 millimeter size okay now after the this is the standard size ranging from 50, 40 to 50 millimeter size as per the indian railway also you can see the 50 millimeter size you use we use in indian railway track now let's discuss the depth of minimum depth of ballast cushion ballast cushion means this depth okay i'm talking about the vertical distance what is the depth of this ballast it's depend on the loads coming on the ballast 
the load on the slipper is transferred through the medium of ballast to the formation. That means from the slipper is transferred to the formation. The load is transferred from the slipper to the formation via ballast. Okay. So ballast is an intermediate portion between slipper and formation. Okay. For simplicity, the dispersion of load can be assumed to be roughly 45 degree to the vertical. That means if I see, if you see in this diagram, here you can see. Okay, this is your uh, this is your slipper uh, spacing. Okay, this is your cross section, uh, not actually cross section. You are you can see uh, the train is moving in this horizontal direction. Okay. You are not seeing it is not actually cross section, it is a longitudinal direction. Okay, so don't confuse here. You can imagine the train moving in this direction. Okay, so you can you are seeing this diagram from the side, not from the front. Clear, you are seeing this from the side only, not from the front. So, here you can see this is your slipper lying in this direction, this is a slipper lying in this direction. And this is your slipper spacing okay so dimensions are given this is the slipper width slipper width and this is the slipper spacing suppose okay and the load distribution from the rail there is a rail this is here is the rail you can see the rail is uh, the rail is uh, um, laid in this direction and train is moving in this direction okay can you see more rail is moving in this direction so the load is uh, transfer to the uh, ballast in this direction at an angle making an angle with the vertical 40 degree with the vertical fine so in a in from the edge of the sleeper the the load is distributed like this clear and this line should not cross each other okay this is how we have to maintain the sleeper spacing it should not cross to each other so the load okay so the load on the slipper is transferred through the medium of the ballast to the formation for simplicity the dispersion of the load can be assumed to be roughly 45 degree to the vertical here you can see the load is dispersed or transferred downward at an angle 40 degree with the vertical okay in order to ensure that the load is transferred evenly on the formation, the depth of the ballast should be such that the dispersion line do not overlap each other. That means uh, you need to provide a depth of the ballast in such a way that that means you can see this is your slip uh, slipper below this. This is your ballast. Okay, these are the ballast. So you have to give such a depth. Okay. So, such a depth of the ballast so that this dispersion line do not cross either each other okay just imagine a line this line above this so if i draw a line in at midpoint here that means this is your depth of this uh, depth of for your ballast okay so if i give a lesser depth of ballast then the line may cross each other okay so you have to go at below down and down okay so this line is very important in order to ensure load transfer evenly on the formation the depth of the depth of the ballast should be such that the dispersion line do not overlap each other okay for even distribution of the load on the formation the depth of the ballast is determined by the following formula that means this formula you have to remember is very important and the sleeper spacing equal to width of the sleeper multiply two times uh, plus two times of depth of ballast okay you can see slipper spacing means this is your slipper slipper spacing from the center of the slipper okay from the center of slipper is come you can see the diagram is equal to width of the slipper this is your width of the slipper plus twice of depth of ballast okay twice of depth of ballast Here you can see depth of ballast this is your depth of ballast fine so from this formula you can also find out the depth of ballast if you know the slipper spacing 
if you know the slipper spacing and if you know the weight of the slipper weight of the slipper it's easy to find out depth of ballast or vice versa anything can be find out if two parameters is known to you if you know if you if you can give a known value of depth of ballast okay and if you know the weight of the slipper then you can find out the slipper spacing they are all related to each other okay fine so this is all about today class okay so only i guess i guess uh, only 5 4 minutes are left now so if somehow the meeting get closed rejoin in the meeting okay i'm uh, closing my sharing now the meeting may get closed okay because the time is already crossed only two or three minutes left till then i will take the attendance if somehow it get cancelled you just rejoin it okay and i'm also closing the recording also after that i'm taking the attendance now is there any doubt you can also ask me